everyone, and welcome back to BrickCats. Today we're taking a look at Jerax TIE Interceptor version 2, which was released earlier this summer by BrickVault. As always, I greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe or give the video a like. Your support means more great mock reviews in the future. The TIE Interceptor was an upgrade from the standard TIE Fighter for additional speed, weaponry, and maneuverability. Of course, it distinguishes itself visually from the standard TIE Fighter with its dagger-shaped wings, angled on both the top and bottom, along the lines of Darth Vader's TIE Advanced. The Interceptors first appeared in Return of the Jedi, and have since been featured elsewhere in canon, such as in Star Wars Rebels. LEGO has released a couple of TIE Interceptors in minifigure compatible scales, including Major Von Reg's version from the Resistance TV series, and the classic black and blue version from 2006. In my reviews, I offer my opinions on aesthetics and model features, parts issues you might want to look out for, the build experience, the model's integrity, and I offer a conclusion on the model. If you're watching this, I assume you have bought the instructions or are interested in buying them, and I assume a basic level of familiarity with BrickLink's ordering system. Lastly, my disclaimer on this and all my mock reviews is that I only use genuine LEGO bricks, and I always purchase the instructions for myself for my own personal enjoyment in the hopes that my advice will make your experience more enjoyable and or less expensive. The main features of the Interceptor are the dagger wings and the eyeball cockpit. The wings are canted at pretty much the perfect angle from what I can tell. And there's nice detailing with the wingtip cannons and the sensor array in between the in the wing gaps. There's also some simple but effective greaveling on the essential support pylon here, and the brick built wings leave them nice and shiny, with the exception of these uh, these rows of fluted bricks here. Moving to the cockpit area, one of the major changes was eliminating the printed 6x6 dish, which was very expensive in favor of the new 4x4 dish. This one does not hinge up and down like the old one does, but unfortunately, and unfortunately, this one also has a stud on top. But it still looks good, and of course Jarek has made constructed the rest of the cockpit to make up for the difference in shape for the new top dome. The cockpit hinges at the bottom. And inside the cockpit itself, there's a lot of detailing. It's actually very crowded in there. And in addition to the control yoke in the center with the little minifigure arms, there are those two little screen assembly representations off to either side, consistent with what we've seen from the TIE cockpits in Star Wars Squadrons. Like I said, the control hardware inside the cockpit does make it really crowded, but you can fit a minifigure in there. I just haven't put one in at the moment. The droid arms that hold the side screen assemblies in place do break up the nice smooth outline of the cockpit eyeball a little bit, but these two dark bluish gray modified plates add accuracy as that's a little bit of greebling that was present in the film models. Moving to the rear, the twin ion engines are represented by the two red modified plate with bar pieces with the hemisphere shape again defined by the 3x3x2 round bricks. I mentioned the fluted 1x2 bricks on the wings, and I can go either way on these. I'm still not crazy about them just because it breaks up kind of the overall look of the wings, I think. And everything I've seen in the film models has the wings being a uniform texture. On the other hand, it does break up the monotony a little bit, and again, if someone can pinpoint the source for where these sections might have been inspired from, I'm definitely interested in seeing it. But in the meantime, I will defer to Jarek's expertise. And once again, I elected to put on these one by one quarter round tiles in black to make the cockpit a little cleaner. With this one, there's a lot going on in the cockpit, and you can see the edges of the droid arms there. So I really do think that these are a nice addition to just make the interior of the cockpit a little cleaner and less distracting. And last but not least, the stand is very simple and it also holds the interceptor at a nice angle. Also very sturdy, it's not going anywhere. And the interceptor just studs into this Technic piece.
This model uses 140 elements and 1,018 parts. If you have the original, the instructions do come with a supplemental parts list for everything you need to build a new version, which totals 108 elements and 531 pieces. Most of the pieces do have an edge showing, which limits your color substitutions, but there are definitely a few you can make. The eight 1x8 tiles, part 4162, in light bluish gray, can be subdivided into 1x4 tiles at the cost of a slightly less smooth look, and these are all on the outer edges of the triangular part of the wings here. Once again, the eight brick round corner 3x3x2 dome top that make up the eyeball, that's part 88293 in light bluish gray, are quite expensive in the United States right now, and to get all eight of them from one store typically runs you over one dollar per piece. I suggest buying these from Lego Bricks and Pieces. This element is currently available for 55 cents. And again, if you're planning to build the standard TIE Fighter and the TIE Advanced, you need eight of them for each. So if you order 24, the shipping cost averages brings your average down a little bit lower. The cockpit windscreen specified is the Dish 6x6 Inverted, no studs with bar handle with Star Wars 8-spoke dark bluish gray frame and rivets tie cockpit pattern, part 18675 PB09. This part seems to have a wide variation in price. I've gotten them as cheap as about 30 cents, but lately the algorithm results were coming in more around $2. Part 18675 PV02, the dish 6x6 inverted, no studs with bar handle with Star Wars 8 spoke radial cockpit pattern, is basically the same thing with a slightly different color. I believe it's more uh, black for the printed portion and it seems to be less expensive. And this is also the same one that came with the newest TIE Fighter set 75300. The two tile 1x2 with avionics, Star Wars copper, copper, red, and silver pattern, part 3069 BPS2, can also be randomly expensive, so I would make sure you know how much you're paying for that when you run the algorithm. Sometimes the algorithm gives you a store selling them for 50 cents, which is a pretty reasonable price, but sometimes you get a store selling them for like $7, which I would avoid. And if you can't get them for a low price, I would just skip them, because honestly, as you can see, the cockpit is very crowded, and they're very hard to see even when you open this up and you've got it right in close to you. The 12 minifigure roller skates in light bluish gray, part 11253, can be expensive depending on the seller. They're replaceable with four 1x1 one one bricks in light bluish gray, part 3005 if you really want, but I will admit these do look really good right here. The tile round 2x2 with bottom stud holder with black Star Wars TIE Fighter pattern, part 14769 PB025 can also be expensive. It's nice to have, but even a solid color 2x2 round tile in dark bluish gray would look good here to save on cost, or if you really want you could just leave it off and it still looks okay. For those of you looking for some additional modifications to make this look better, the obvious one that came to mind would be to use the tile modified 1x3 inverted, part 35459, in light bluish gray to make these edges along the inside of the wing blend a little better. With the anti-studs, they're a little distracting, but it's not too bad. The three Technic Axle 3L, part 4519, are specified in black. This color is a little bit uncommon, and light bluish gray works just fine. You can only see uh, one length of them right here in this bottom part of the stand. The 5L Axle you could also substitute light bluish gray for. I had a black one, but you can only see the edge right here. And it's there for, the, for additional strength and um, the connection on these Technic arms are with pins already, so it's pretty strong. You probably don't even need it. And finally, the 12 Technic Pin 1 half, part 4274, specified in light bluish gray, are also used on the stand. These are very common in blue, but you can't see them in the final build because they're hidden under this tile. This is a relatively straightforward build, but sorting some parts before starting out will likely save you some time and frustration, as most of the parts are in light bluish gray. The instructions contain 257 steps, which includes the stand, and each part to be added is highlighted with a yellow outline. 
I did not run into any issues with viewing angle or odd sequencing of steps, and I did not have any problems with any of the connections. Many, if not all, of the issues I had with the original version were addressed either on purpose or by chance. For example, the instructions tell you to assemble the hinge bricks and plates and then stud, uh, then connect the, the wings to them with studs instead of installing the hinge plates and then trying to force them into these hinge bricks here. And that's just a lot easier. The build took me about three or four hours total, but this was without any significant sorting ahead of time and with a fair bit of distraction. Uninterrupted with sorting, I think this would take about two or three hours for even a moderately experienced builder. The interceptor is pretty solid almost everywhere. The wing borders are all secured with these clip and bar connections on both sides. Can I see this one right here? And that means that the wing angles are, are locked in place, so these don't flap around. Uh, wing connections are not strong enough to lift them by one wing. I don't recommend doing that. But you can pick it up with two like this, perfectly fine. The wingtip cannons are probably the most delicate part of this model just because of the connections. So these often get, you can see they're kind of already a little bit out of alignment. Uh, but the connection there, not too strong. Just don't bump them, you'll be okay. Sometimes the clip and bar comes off like that. Similarly, the cockpit cannons are a little bit loose just because they're basically able to pivot on the connection with the droid arm. But um, it's this, this whole assembly is definitely a lot better than the original, and there's no business, I mean, the, it's just a clip connection here, so it's very solid. Swooshing the model is reasonably easy, and the natural grip with your fingers on the top and the bottom dishes works out just fine. This top dish does rotate pretty easily, so it occasionally comes out of alignment and pops off. But it's not a big deal to just stick that back in place. When the interceptor is sitting on the stand, the whole thing is very stable. The instructions do note that the best way to take the interceptor off is by tilting, tilting it forward. And that is definitely true. But occasionally you run into a problem where this bottom plate uh, just sticks in the Technic piece. Which does mean that uh, this connection is stronger than the connection to those studs down there. But I still definitely recommend building the sand. It's a great inclusion. And I think this was a big thing that was missing from the original version. So overall, this is a very stable build. And the inclusion of a stand means it looks really nice on the shelf, or on display. In conclusion, GRX TIE Interceptor version 2 is an excellent model, and improves on the original in nearly every way. BrickLink's algorithm was returning on average 5 stores and $147 before shipping and tax, with no part substitutions, which is about $172 after shipping and tax. If you take out those expensive 3x3x2 corner bricks and buy them from LEGO, you can likely shave another $7 or $8 off the total and possibly reduce the store count by one. Buying the supplemental parts to convert the original into the new version was typically costing around $65 from four stores, or about $85 after shipping and tax. Instructions for GRX Tire Interceptor version 2 are available from Brick Vault and cost $16.99. Thanks as always for taking the time to watch my review. If you've built this model, you have something to share that I left out, or have a question about something I didn't cover, please leave them below in the comments. Also, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, or following me on Instagram. I hope to see you back next time.